Hey, my name is Heath George and welcome to What We Drinking. But before we get started, make sure you guys subscribe, like and follow us on all our platforms so that way you can be up to date on videos when they drop. Tonight, my guest is the largest reggae band right now in the Virgin Islands who have been taking the VI by storm with reggae music. Please join me and welcome my guest, Dub Lab, featuring Derek Tavernier. How are you guys doing tonight, man? Good, good, good. good. Yeah, good. Pleasure to be here, man. Definitely. So, before we get started, everybody else wants to know one thing. What are we drinking? I want to know what we're drinking. So, bartender, what are we drinking tonight? Bartender. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, this is called What's for Dinner. Woo! Oh, looks good. Ain't that pretty? It looks what's good. What's for dinner? Look at this. Look at this. Enjoy, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Guys, make sure you guys follow her on Instagram, okay? Make sure you guys follow her on Instagram, our bartender. Make sure you put the link right here below. So make sure you guys check that out. She is the baddest, okay? Make sure you guys check that out for sure. So, guys, let's try this drink out. Can't wait. What's for dinner? This is a little tough. This is coming for dinner. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we have. It's coming for dinner. This ain't Natty Dread Locks. That's for sure. What? Can I take this home with me? Got a bubble drag going there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what do we call this? What's for dinner? Yeah, sorry, I, I ain't gonna be able to put this down right now. Wow. Won't be able to drink any more tonight. <laughs> okay, listen, listen. Again, make sure you guys follow the bartender. This is called What's for Dinner by Kali Liberations. Okay? Wow, make sure you follow our Instagram, the link is here below. We're here with Dub Lab. So, guys, tonight, mm -hmm. let's get right into it. I'm gonna take your time. I'm gonna take my time for this one. Right? <laughs> Let's get right into it. Normally, I finish the drinks, I always take it halfway. They, they wanted to challenge me tonight. And I apologize that they wanted to challenge me tonight. And you guys have to be a part of that challenge. Right? <laughs> That's okay. Take it to That's all good. So now, Dub Lab. You guys recently started a rigged band here in the VI. And since then, have gained so much traction and so much notoriety for the quality oh. that you guys put out. What can we expect from Dub Lab music wise coming out soon? Right. Well, I mean, go ahead. Ah, okay. Um, okay, we have uh, like three tracks completed, and those should be out probably um, by December, I'd say. Stand up? Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I like to always ask, can, can we, what kind of, what kind of music coming out? Like, is it all reggae, reggae dancehall, reggae hip hop, reggae afro? Like, what, what are we looking at? Well, we, we like to call ourselves a reggae band, but truth is, like, we, we're very, like, versatile in, like, different genres. You're very so versatile is, like, an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, I appreciate that. But, um... We kind of like fuse R and B into our reggae. Oh. So if you listen to our music, it kind of sounds like a little more smooth right. kind of reggae. Cool. So I haven't we haven't got a name for the genre yet, but I guess we'll call it double up reggae. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. Okay. That's all right. You guys should trademark that shit. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. So now, do you guys mind giving us a little sneak peek on what's to come? Uh, mm. We'll hold out on that. We like to. <laughs> we like to. We like to keep. The little suspense and make it fresh when it really comes out you know what i mean but it's some good content i could guarantee you that okay mm -hmm. i could guarantee you that <laughs> all right so now derek tavernier is here with you guys tonight yes sir now derek tavernier you've been in this game for a hot minute as well yeah i know you got you recently was traveling to jersey mm -hmm. and i think i'm not sure if it's philly or memphis you were in before um. Minnesota. Minnesota. No, I ain't live in the States at all. <laughs> but it's not my fault, right? <laughs> but basically, you were there, you were doing some work, you getting some yeah. work done. I think even you had a, recently had a concert before you came back here yeah. as well. Yeah, so my Jersey family, uh, they threw a farewell uh, event for me. That was 
That was lit. That's dope. That's dope. So, um, what can we expect from you? Me Tyler? personally, uh, my my biggest um, anticipation in music was to link up with Dub Lab and uh -huh. I. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, um, and they take it lightly because I know them personally. I'm but still checking I. This. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, you don't know what you're gonna do to you. It's a bit chubby, man. But yeah, um, Dub Lab, man, they just been a huge inspiration to me when it comes to uh, island music. A lot of times when we say island music, you think the lowest quality of music. Right, come on, right. Well, but stereotypically, that's yeah. 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 But when you hear Dub Lab, um, Ain't nothing local about these guys. That's a worldwide international song. This is something uh, I would put, and I mean, excuse me if I want to bash me. I put on the worldwide marketing scale of Michael Jackson. Whoa, because whoa. their music could touch any air. Well, that's that's oh. quite a feat of praise. I, yes, I to I, give a I, band yes, that doesn't I, have one record out yet. I could listen, and I could <laughs> st I could stand on it confidently with everything in me. Okay. I could put my whole career on it, actually. And likely too, we are delighted in working with them as well. We always look like for um, an opportunity to work with them, yeah. and it just happened that he moved back, so yeah. everything just worked out perfectly. Yeah, everything happened at that. Yeah. So I know you guys have worked with artists such as Jay Paris, Mike Love, just to name a few. Um, how is it working with different artists? Well, like, does it get confusing? Or is it complicated? Is it like easy to just flow in? Do some artists give you shit? You know, <laughs> like what? What? Let me, let me have some of this. <laughs> <laughs> this this looks like a type of drink. Yeah, because I think people really want to hear. You know, because a lot of people like to they hear the music, right, but right. they don't really see the what really happens right, right, behind the right, scenes. Right. Well, of course, dealing with different personalities will always be, you know, so much of a. I guess a, a, a test, <laughs> you know, but Emphasis on tests. normally what, what happens is when they get with us and they hear their music coming back at them the way we bring it, mm. everything will just yeah, yeah. come together. That's great. So I know, I think it was either this year or last year, you guys had that concert with Chronix and literally this year, mm -hmm. this year, I think, yeah, this year for 2020, January, January mm -hmm. um, Martin Luther weekend. weekend. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing, but good thing, is that Chronix was on stage, but people were more interested in hearing you guys on Taurus Riley than Chronix. <laughs> um, Let me take another sip. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not saying that that's a problem but that's a problem right <laughs> it, it, it's a problem because but a good thing as well it's a problem that artists that have established themselves can't meet the quality that we expect here is do you think that is um deliberate or it's just where they are well in, in my, my personal opinion um i think chronics and the Zinc Fen Blue Dead Children is a very, like, like, they are very great, you know, musical band. And I wouldn't say that we played better than them. I wouldn't say that we haven't reached theirs yet. But I would say that our crowd was just a little different because they are accustomed of appealing to the European crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, when you go over there to those big shows, you have like, 50,000 people, like people already came with a mindset to party. Right. You understand? So they're already pre gamed here in the islands. We can, we are a little more like, um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, mm -hmm. but we're a little more um, critical when it comes to like, um, I guess. Um, yeah, it's like a real critical. Crowd, man. Like when it comes to critic, we look for the best. So it, it, it could be a good thing. Mm -hmm being extra critical and then it could be a bad thing for the artists because they have to work harder mm -hmm. but we're already accustomed to that because you know me and Junior already we played well Juni first <laughs> Juni first Juni been playing for probably over 20 years that's gonna be a lot of VI market 
Yeah. So he already accustomed. We already like have a little knows what they expect. How to appeal yeah. to like the VI crowd? I don't think Chronic had that, so that was probably the problem. Okay. Well, that's good. So now, before we get more into this thing, right? I want to know first. How many members are in the back? Officially. Okay. We okay. So we have. <laughs> we have six members on stage. On stage, and you know we play with like famous artists such as Mike Love, you know Lioness, mm. JP, Derek. They're features, right. so they're not really a part of the band. They have their own entity and own right. stuff going on. So there's like six. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's dope. Including our engineer, world renowned oh. Avocado Avo, Mixed by Avo. Henry. Okay. Yeah. So. So Same again. Way. Shout out to Avo and this Cheers. very button is on Wait, Avo get a whole chair. I mean, right. Right. <laughs> well, it's amazing. Can I make a quick comment? Yeah, yeah. 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 This is this is actually um mixed very very well because yes. you could notice the difference while you you sipping on it. Oh. So there was something settled in the bottom that was very meticulous yeah. from the bottom. Like, I had to add. Like as it goes, well it done, just keep it just flows. Yeah. So it every has sip it gets levels. better. So I, I I have to I have to give that some kind of yeah. Good job, button. Yeah. yeah, make sure you guys follow her again. Link is right there below. So make sure the bottom, you yeah. guys follow her down here. Now, before we get into anything else, first, what we want to do is give a shout out to our sponsors. This is Kali. Thank you for tuning in with us and what we drinking. Tonight's first specialty drink is called What's for Dinner. The ingredients are as follows. One ounce of dark rum, one and a half ounce of Irish cream, and for garnish, one cherry on the rim. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, back on the conversation. Now, again, I'm the only non-father here, and single for the ladies. But still, right, um, <laughs> as musicians and entertainers, as Derek was saying, it, it gets hard sometimes, and having the right kind of people around you helps. But what I really want to know is, do you want your children to follow in your footsteps as a, 
unnecessary is it a requirement yeah. because a lot of parents that have been in that industry tend to want their children to follow suit if they if they're born with the talent you know the parents could sing for the one and the child could sing the parents was an artist boom you have to be a singer mm. you know is that what you guys want for your child like do you expect your child your children to follow in that footstep well Johnny being a veteran I'm, I'm gonna let him know <laughs> No, I think um, even a kid could find their, their niche, oh. you know what I mean? And once they find a niche, then you guide them, help mold them, you know? But you should enforce it on anything, you know what I mean? Even, even if they have the talent for it? it? At the end of the day, remember, like, you are what your environment produces. Okay. So if you if you see Daddy in the studio, twenty four seven, I mean obviously, you're going to want to probably touch a little producing, a little engineering, because that's why you grow up right. seeing. But at the end of the day, like yeah, a child has the the right to choose, but then I think at that early stage, they don't really have the knowledge to know what they want to do mm -hmm. as a young early stage. When they grow up a little older and they get into the world now. Mm -hmm. You know, they start to see different stuff other than Daddy Eric producing music. So now their mind is a little more open now for different avenues. So that's where I think the decision making comes. But you should never like force a child to say, okay, I'm, I'm a keyboardist, I want you to play the keyboard. Right. You know, it's good to have the knowledge and the skill, but you cannot tell them that's what you want them to do as a career. And that's my, my take. Yeah, that makes sense. So you would prefer okay let's say you would teach them if because they're around it they're growing up around it so you teach them what you know you right. show them right but at the end of the day it's still up to them to make that decision exactly yes like my daughter right now she plays the piano and there's no doubt that she know her daddy is a keyboardist mm. so she probably wanted to okay my daddy plays the keyboard i want to take piano lessons mm. yeah that's okay now but when she grows older she might want to be a nurse. <laughs> she okay. might find a new passion for a nurse. So, but that's okay. But she's still a keyboardist. Right. But that doesn't have to be like the trend she takes. Right. Okay. So, before we continue, I want to shout out to the one place where if you have a hangover from drinking, or <laughs> if you feel sick, <laughs> or if you need something. To that, if you're under the weather and you need something, that's that's remember it. and just remember Chelsea's drugstore out there in Red Hook. You check them out, okay? They got everything you need for everything that you took that you didn't need, okay? Right? Make sure you go in and check them out. And also, if you're in St. John, they're over there next to Starfish Market. They don't understand what you do. <laughs> you definitely do understand oh, what God. I'm talking about. And also, you know, like when you drink too much or smoke too much, for you smokers out there, we don't discriminate. And you get the munchies or you get hungover hungry, if that's a thing. I think it is. Yeah. What's that, right? Check out Joseph's Bakery out there when in content. She is open 24, not 24 7. I lie, I'm gonna lie to you. Right, she's open now because of Corona. Times have changed, but make sure you go check her out. The links are below. Make sure you follow her. She has the best damn banana bread I have ever tasted. And she has like the little mini ones. So if you ain't too sure, you're gonna buy that small one. But I guarantee once you buy the small one, you buy the big one. Because I told you so. Okay, so make sure you guys check that out. She got breakfast, parties, everything. And if you have an event coming up and you need a caterer, make sure you guys check them out, all right? Now, before we continue right now, I realize we've been sitting here without a drink. Mm. Oh, man. So now, we just got to figure out, bartender, what are we drinking now? What are we drinking? What are we drinking, drinking now, man? I need a drink. <laughs> it's like so... 
Julie say you want this one. Round two, guys. This is called Honey Bear. Honey Bear. Honey Bear. Oh, jeez. This is making me so honey bear. Disclaimer. Today is my birthday. So, anything I do or say beyond the point of this drink cannot be held against me. Yeah. Happy birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. You spill all the honey bear? Oh, it has honey in it. That is nice. That is innovative. Marcus, don't get a, a, a zoom in of me linking the honey, right? that might be a little too seductive. Who is this bartender? Listen, I just said this, and I'm going to say this again. Make sure you follow our bartender mm -hmm. on Instagram, Holly oh, Libations, okay? Now, this is my new favorite. This now new listen, favorite. now listen. I keep telling you all this and y'all don't seem to listen to me. We got the best bartenders on the island. And I I, I said that with complete confidence. Try me if you bad. Yeah, everything try me. Everything makes so well. I can't try me. figure out. I vote for that. Try me. If you bad, try me. We got the best darn bartenders on the fucking island, okay? <laughs> so remember, you saw like Instagram the link below, Cardi Libations, okay? Um, she will definitely have you libated on um, what? Some honey. I don't know what I mean. Okay. I don't know. I'm making something up. But listen. Hey Siri, what does? <laughs> <laughs> what got? Okay. And then what? We, I think we need Alexa for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. New Siri, all okay. this. <laughs> now again, my team has advised me that I should not be drinking any more than half the cup because of previous um. Encounters. Encounters and stuff. I'm not an alcoholic, don't judge me. <laughs> you should have briefed me on that before the interview. <laughs> right, well, well, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, um, as we move along, right, back on the topic of you guys being fathers and musicians. Now, we get we heard you guys' opinion on how you guys think you should deal with these matters such as like your child and having them uh, and them wanting to follow their own path if they want to follow your path now to the parents out there that force that shit on their children what would you advise them and would you want them would you tell them to stop would you tell them to continue would you tell them to Find a back. Like, what would you tell them? Quick and simple. Stop that shit. <laughs> that's that. That's my answer to that. Because just like you have your own, uh, ain't nobody force us to be musicians. All right. Uh, my mom is a chef. I could have been a chef. Right. Ain't nobody force us to be musicians. That's what we love. That's what we grew up uh, having a passion for. My oldest daughter, she is amazing at graphic effects and animations. Something that would take me two hours would take her 30 minutes to do. Life animations. So that's just her niche. I would never tell a child, music is what you have to do. Because I see an avenue or a venue for her to make money or a living in music. So, yeah, back to my first point, stop that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you guys agree wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Last... Julie's an awesome father, by the way. The last thing I know, right? I tried to be an I, awesome I, uncle. I could never force my parents to buy me whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> point. Point. Yeah. You know, so, parents, <laughs> go force it on them. <laughs> Let them find it on them. I like that. You I know, like that. That's coming good. Uh, yeah. That's that coming good. Yeah. That's some very interesting logic. Yeah. And I think what happened is, is that it, it, it fucks with the child mentally. Oh. You know? Because they might want to do something, but now what you're telling them is, no, do this instead. It's, it's almost like being in school and you don't like science, but they force you to take science classes after school, mm -hmm. which is like, they don't make no sense. Why the fuck am I here? I don't, I don't like the class. And then look, algebra you're never going to use in your life. I, I know, I know, <laughs> stuff like that. You know, and I think what that, that leads to like different types of depression and you, you feel fucked up mentally, you know. It, 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 and I don't think as parents and as citizens, shit, you know, we should allow our child to grow up that way. That's true. Because eventually what will happen is they do what they want to do. They may make money, but no matter how much money you have, 
if you're rich and miserable, it's yeah. better off you be broke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's mm -hmm. like stop drinking at eleven o'clock. Right. Yeah, doing what I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, confession time. Uh, Anything you want to tell us, Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, no target on the government. We understand the COVID protocols, but I don't want to stop drinking at the level. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that drink? Uh, uh. At the level, we're gonna deliberately finish the drink. Hey. Well, technically, you just stop drinking at the bar at eleven. Mm. You could, you could, you technically just buy your bottle at nine, ten o'clock, and mm. you'll be good. You make your own drinks. You're right, you're right. And you're fine. You see, so there's ways around it, just yeah. like how there's ways around everything else. Yeah. On a serious matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To to all the parents out there that you know your child is talented in something. Now, I would say encourage them to do whatever they're talented at, but. Make sure it's something that they want to do. Uh -huh. Like, for instance, when I was young, my parents wanted me to be a lawyer. I watched every Matlock show. I mean, every Matlock show. Wow, you old man. Every Law and Order. Every SVU, <laughs> crash, everything, special victims unit. Like, I watch them all. Shit. You know, I mean, I mean, I watch that too. This one is a friend. This one is a mad love. Yeah. You used to watch Gilligan Island. Yes. It's a sad, you know. You know, this is. It's not my fault, shit, okay? I know. But at the end of the day. You can't blame on anybody. What happened was, I went and I actually worked for two lawyers. And I was like... And you loved it? Huh? I was like, fuck that shit. Like, this is so much reading. Really? Now, now, mind you, I like to read. I just don't like to read that. Okay? <laughs> and I think it's when you find out what you're really interested in doing, and you love doing, like, I love this business. Mm -hmm. Good the entertainment business. I would be broke and do this, and I would still be happy. And at the end of the day, once you love what you do and, music. and you find a way to make money doing it, no matter how long it takes, once you find a way to make money doing it, trust me, you're not actually working, you're just existing, you're just enjoying life. Hallelujah! Come on now. <laughs> Every single time after that. So, to close this interview, all I have to say is what they have said as fathers to parents. Whatever your child wants to do, encourage them. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, their happiness is their, is your top priority. Yes. And to everybody else that you've probably already grown and your parents, you don't live with them anymore, they might call you and ask you why you ain't went to law school or get went to school to be a doctor or an accountant or some bullshit that you didn't want to do. Tell your parents kindly and in the most polite way. I ain't doing that shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to say. If, if you're not living under the roof. Yeah, if, if, you know, you're definitely not living under the roof, you know? Don't live under the roof and do that, you know? You must pay your own bills to open them up and say something. Yeah. Like and again, in the most polite way. Don't use these exact words I said. Oh, because you a, will. We're in the Caribbean, you're going to get boxed. You're going to get, get hard. Get hard stuff, okay? <laughs> and listen, this. Uh, Full disclaimer, we're not responsible for anything that happens to you afterwards or during the show. Any content that is said is in the show. We are not solely responsible for whatever happens to you afterwards, right? But. So, again, make sure you guys follow these guys on Instagram, Facebook, link below at Dublab. Dublab, baby! Dublab, make sure you follow them. And, again, next time you sign in, you come in next week, we got new episodes for you, all right? Woo! So, yeah. yeah! Welcome! Yeah! Oh, you mean, oh, sorry. It was in the head, okay. It was both of Yeah. This is what we're drinking. Yeah. <laughs>